So this is going to be the first video in a series of videos covering my camper build. This first video is going to be of the deck. So I started with a boat trailer that I picked up, uh, used for a, a few hundred bucks. And that's going to be my, my base there, what I start with. And I uh, start off by uh, building this deck that uh, you'll see in the following video. So I started off uh, by taking off the wheel wells. I just used a grinder with a metal cutoff wheel and a sawzall with a metal blade on there uh, just to remove those wheel wells. Uh, from there it left a fairly rough edge. So I just took a uh, my grinder with a metal uh, grinding flap disc to uh, smooth down those welds and that, those jagged edges just to give myself a, a smooth flat surface uh, to build on. Okay, so now I'm laying out my material to start building the first section of this deck. I decided to build this in, in sections uh, just to make it easier to build as well as I uh, thought it would make it a little bit stronger. So I used 2x6. Uh, everything I put on this deck was pressure treated. I went with 2x6 uh, for the outer pieces of the frame and then 2x4 for any of the cross members that went in between that frame. I wanted to use 2x6 just to give it a little bit of added strength and support. As you, as you can see here, I'm uh, hanging my 2x6 over uh, around a foot, a little under a foot, uh, where this outer uh, edge of my frame comes right to 8 feet or 96 inches, uh, which meets up nicely with the outside of my tires. So I'm just measuring this first section. Uh, like I said, it was 96 wide by about about three feet or uh, two and a half feet uh, deep there. So I'm making this first box. And as you can see there, I'm cutting the two by four for the center. And then after that, it's just a matter of uh, assembling everything. I'm using three inch long deck screws uh, to assemble this. found that sending these screws in at a slight angle uh, is definitely helpful, especially when going into end grain, like you see here. Uh, with this pressure treated material, it, it, it tends to be wet, uh, especially if it's just been sitting on the shelf at your lumber supply store or Home Depot. So if you send those screws in at an angle, it'll definitely grab your grain a lot better. I ended up actually using some ties, some, uh, some corner brackets to tie these pieces in together even better, uh, which I'll show a little bit later on in the video. So now I have half inch plywood, pressure treated as well, and I'm simply just ripping it to uh, width and length to fit uh, perfectly on uh, the bottom side of this frame, uh, just come flush with the outside of uh, the frame. So I flip my frame over, I rip my half inch plywood, and then I'm just going to line it up and then screw it into the bottom of the plywood. From there I'll flip my frame back over and line it up on the trailer where I want it to go. Okay, so for the plywood I ended up using an inch and a quarter deck screws. Uh, just this is half inch plywood. It's not uh, structural really. It does help. Uh, it does make the, the whole frame stronger for sure. But the main purpose of this plywood in this particular build was just to give me something to lay my insulation down on. Uh, that was kind of the whole purpose of building the deck this way was I wanted to insulate it well. So here I'm just removing the lights on the trailer they were in the way of that frame. I knew I had to relocate them at some point, but just took those off. Now I am measuring and cutting my center 2x4. And I tried to build this on 16-inch uh, centers as close as I could, um, because as you'll see later on, I'm using this pretty standard uh, R30 wall installation. Uh, that's designed for 16-inch centers. They also sell it for 24-inch centers, but I wanted to go uh, 
uh, 16 on this particular project. Uh, I wasn't able to hit that exactly on you know, every section, but you know, if you can get it fairly close, a little under or over is fine. Uh, that insulation is fairly flexible. So now I lined it up perfectly side to side on my, my trailer, made sure it was square. And now I'm starting to drill my holes out for the bolts. So I used a 3 16 inch uh, diameter drill bit that was about a foot long as a pilot hole all the way through my material, my uh, 2x6 plywood and into the frame itself through the steel. And then I took an inch and a quarter spade bit, paddle bit, uh, and then from there I just used a 9 16 inch diameter drill bit to drill the remaining section of my holes. Because uh, as you can see there, I'm using a half inch diameter bolt. So I just went a, a tad over that with 9 16 uh, I took my skill saw and curved out a section to allow for my washer to sit flat, but I also wanted the head of my bolt to sit down below flush on the top of the two by six. So as you can see there, just fed that through the washer, lined it up, my handy dandy tape to hammer that uh, bolt down into the trailer. Okay, so now moving on to the next section. Same process. I'm building this one to go in between the, the tires. Uh, I believe this one came out to around six feet in width and about 33 inches in depth. Just built it that way the wheel well area would be symmetrical between each section so I just kind of measured over where the axle was and uh, went from there. Built this all out of 2 by 4 in plywood uh, just because of the way I had in mind to build this as you'll, you'll, you'll see it later on how it all tied together. Okay so now I'm continuing on with the next section. Uh, this one is going to be 96 inches wide again to match that first section. Uh, building the outside pieces out of 2 by 6 and then the uh, center cross members out of 2 by 4 I built this one about 6 feet long uh, so I used uh, a full sheet of plywood and then a half sheet of another piece of plywood there. Okay, so now I'm starting to bolt everything down. Starting with the first frame, I explained this a little bit earlier, but essentially just feeding on your lock washer and your nut onto the bottom of your bolt there. And then I just use my impact driver and uh, a wrench and just cinch that down nice and tight. Uh, make sure your washer is pretty big, that way it spreads out that surface area and doesn't doesn't sink too uh, far down into your, your wood. So after bolting the first section to the trailer using four bolts, I started with the next section that went in between the wheels. I bolted uh, one end, so two bolts, into the actual trailer itself as you're seeing here. Same process as before. And then on the other side that actually butts up to the first section, uh, I actually bolted those two together as opposed to bolting that to the frame of the trailer. It just would have been a lot harder uh, to get at that. Uh, those bolts would have had to just con constantly remove the, the whole section of, uh, of uh, wood framing there to access the those bolts. So uh, it was plenty strong doing it this way and just saved a lot of time. Same process, just cinching those uh, down nice and tight. And then it just moved on to uh, the sections from there, uh, doing that same process. Uh, just making sure you have uh, at least four really good bolts uh, in, e in each section. And uh, that they're all bolted to the, the trailer as well as each other. So now I'm starting on this final section, this kind of triangular area. Uh, it gets a little more tricky when you're dealing with the angles, but uh, not too hard. I mean, you can use an angle finder or a, 
or just even your speed square like I did here to find your ankles. Um, I, I'm cutting everything off of my battery powered worm drive saw there as you can see uh, which has an adjustable table up to 53 degrees so it, it pretty much did everything I needed to do. Um, you know if you have a miter saw set up it would probably be pretty handy. I just didn't want to get mine out for this particular project but so here I'm just measuring out my two by sixes uh, making sure that they're uh, the exact same length screwing them back into the existing frame uh, cutting the angle I need uh, on the ends and then I basically just kind of set them up on the trailer I wanted the ends to be actually on the trailer itself as opposed to hanging over a little bit, just to it'd be a lot stronger that way. Uh, marking exactly uh, where they need to go on the trailer to make sure that each side is the same. And then I just laid my uh, 2x6 on the end there and scribed it. Just that way it'd be a perfect fit. Cut that, and then just screwed it together. Uh, about three screws on each one of these, uh, making sure that my screws are uh, at a bit of an angle again, just to Make sure they grab nicely. So now I'm sliding a piece of plywood in, uh, but I encountered this ring. I uh, just took a you know grinder with a cutoff wheel and zipped that off. No big deal. So I slide, slid my piece of plywood all the way in. Uh, I built this somewhat purposely. That way I could just use you know, a full sheet of plywood here. I didn't want to make it too, too wide to where I uh, had to rip a small piece of plywood. So I uh, just made sure it was lined up real well. And I just took my marker and marked out the edges. And that uh, gave me my line that I needed to cut. So I just slid this piece of plywood back in, made sure it was lined up real nice, and I, I didn't feel like uh, unscrewing everything and flipping it over, so I just got underneath and uh, set my screws in through the bottom uh, into that plywood. From there, uh, just a matter of lining up my 2x4 cross members, and uh, same thing, just kind of scribed it along that angle, uh, cut that, just a pretty easy way to do it cut that and uh, put it in and screwed it in place. And just follow the same procedure for your following cross members. Uh, just cutting that angle and sliding that in, screwing it in. Uh, try to hit that 16 inch center mark as best you can. Uh, each section was, you know, I couldn't hit exactly that uh, just to make it fit right. Uh, but I, I got it as close as possible. That way uh, I didn't end up having to uh, cut any insulation down uh, along the side, which would have been kind of a pain. So that was kind of the goal. So here you see now I'm actually using uh, the corner brackets I talked about earlier to tie these uh, uh, 2x4s in better with a 2x6. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to put in the insulation and uh, finally the plywood deck. So I started by putting in uh, just pieces of 2x4 blocking on the ends uh, just to give a little added support for my plywood deck uh, there on the ends. And give it a little something extra to screw down to. Uh, I'm using this great stuff sealant uh, to kind of seal up my gaps uh, anywhere where my plywood met up with my uh, exterior uh, 2x6, any kind of joints really uh, or awkward spaces that uh, it's hard to fill up with the uh, other insulation. Uh, just a nice uh, way to kind of uh, seal everything off. So here I'm using just some uh, standard R30 wall insulation. Uh, you can get this at Home Depot. 
cutting it to length after laying it in uh, each bay, uh, just using a pair of tin snips, I think. You can use some scissors or a uh, knife works uh, fine. So just lay this in there. Uh, that's why it's you know, nice to make sure everything's pretty close to 16 inch centers. That way you don't have to end up cutting any of this. Uh, then I just peeled it up the middle like you see here. That way I got, uh, you know, out of one section I could use uh, it for two bays. I just made everything go a lot farther. And there's really no need to uh, squish that down uh, necessarily. So uh, here I'm just adding some uh, blocking in because I was trying to use up some plywood I had laying around the house uh, instead of using pool sheets, going and buying some more plywood. So um, I had to kind of improvise and put in some blocking. That way I could uh, you know, put those joints together with it having some support. So here is the final uh, end product of the, the deck, the first phase of the camper build. Uh, this is the final product. Stay tuned uh, for the rest of the build. I'll be posting videos uh, for each stage as they're completed uh, until we have a final product. Thanks again for watching.